Good morning children. Today we shall learn how algebraic expressions are used specially in generalization. Let us take an example. What is the perimeter of any rectangle? We know the perimeter is the boundary of a closed figure and so the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 multiplied by the length plus 2 multiplied by the width of the rectangle. In the formula of perimeter, the length and width are expressed by the variables, say length by variable L and the width by the variable B. So the perimeter becomes 2 multiplied by L plus 2 multiplied by P. In short, perimeter P is equal to 2L plus 2B. This is called the generalization that is making a formula or the statement which is true for all the specific cases here the perimeter of any rectangle. So here this formula is true for all the rectangles no matter what length and width are. Same way the area of any rectangle is length multiplied by the width. So the area is equal to L into P, in short LB. Thus, algebraic expressions are used in making general formulas which we use in our daily lives. You know, every algebraic expression has variables and every formula is an algebraic expression. For example, Mehnat Ram borrowed 5000 rupees at the interest rate of 8% per annum and here we use the formula for calculating the interest I is equal to PRT upon 100 and this we use to find the interest that he would have to pay. Here I, PRT are the variables as their values may vary. This formula can be used to find the interest in all the cases of simple interest, no matter what the principal, time, etc. are. So we just need to put the values of the variables in the formula. Here, P is equal to 5000, rate is 8%. Say, he has to pay back the loan after 2 years, so T becomes 2 and then we get the value of interest. I is equal to 5000 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 2 and the whole thing divided by 100. 5000 divided by 100 means 50 is left. So we get 50 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 50 multiplied by 16 and we get the answer as 800 rupees. So we just put the values of variables in the formula and get the answer. In some other cases the value would be different but the formula is the same. So a formula is a statement which is the solution of a specific kind of problem. For example the formula in physics for the average speed is the total distance covered divided by time. Say a vehicle took 5 hours to cover 190 kilometers distance between the two towns. So the average speed is equal to 190 divided by 5 which is equal to 38 kilometers per hour. So this formula can be used to find average speed of any vehicle and it is made of variables. We just need to put correct values of the variables in the formula to get the answer. Now let us make a pattern of triangles. One triangle is made of three sides so three sticks are needed for it. Now let us add one more triangle. For this we need two more sticks as one side is common. So, two triangles need five sticks. Now, two more sticks are needed to add the third triangle. So, three triangles need seven sticks. 
Now let us add the fourth triangle. Again, two more sticks are required. See, there is a fixed relation between the number of triangles and the sticks required for the given pattern. Say, the number of triangles is Y. Then, what is the number of sticks required? Can we generalize this and get some formula for it? Let us see. If you observe, when the number of triangles is equal to 2, the number of sticks required is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 plus 1, which is equal to 5. And when the number of triangle is equal to 3, the number of sticks required is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 plus 1, which is equal to 7. Do we see a pattern here? Yes, there is a pattern. Look carefully. The number of sticks in the given pattern is 2 multiplied by the number of triangles plus 1. So, if the number of triangles is represented by the variable y, then the number of sticks required is equal to 2 multiplied by y plus 1. In short, 2y plus 1. So, here we made an algebraic expression 2y plus 1 which relates the number of triangles and the number of sticks required to make it. y is called a variable because the value of y can have different values like 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. That is, the value of y is not fixed. In different cases, y would have different values. So that was all about algebraic expression and its use in real life. Bye bye children.